Here's why the elections in France and Britain are bad news. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. In recent days, both the UK and France held parliamentary elections. Two centrist governments were routed. What these results show is that national leaders continue to pursue bad or ineffective policies, and this opens the door to political extremism. Britain's Conservative Party suffered its worst defeat in its nearly 200-year history. French President Emmanuel Macron saw his party and its allies finish second behind a left-wing coalition, which includes a notorious anti-Semitic group and not far ahead of an extreme right-wing party called the National Rally and its Confederates. Only an unusual alliance in Sunday's runoff in France between centrists and leftists prevented the National Rally from emerging as the country's dominant parliamentary party. What we see here is the policy bankruptcy of most governments today. Massive immigration is opposed by numerous voters everywhere in Europe and the U.S. Yet President Biden opened the borders in all but name that led in more than 10 million illegal immigrants. Millions from poorer countries have poured into the European Union and Britain. The out-of-control nature of this phenomenon and the ensuing social disruptions have provoked a deep backlash. Economies almost everywhere are stagnant because of excessive taxes, stifling regulations, and the binge spending on so-called renewable energy sources that have sent electricity prices to shocking levels, slamming both household and business budgets. Despite the woeful failure of these radical schemes, the Biden administration is promiscuously pushing similarly sweeping and destructive regulations that could never pass a vote in Congress. Growth in Europe and Japan is minuscule, not much better here. Incomes are stagnating. No wonder voters are in a foul mood. French President Emmanuel Macron came into office seven years ago promising pro-growth reforms. He did push raising the retirement age from 62 to 64 and some changes in the sclerotic labor markets, but he avoided the kind of needed deep changes. Take taxes. The European Tax Policy Scoreboard put out by the Tax Foundation found that France had the worst tax system of the 32 countries surveyed. One egregious example, Social Security payroll taxes, which are 15.3% in the U.S., can go as high as 65% in France, with 20-23% to 23 coming from the employee and the rest from the employer. The payroll tax on a person making $70,000 in the U.S. is $10,710, split between employer and employee. In France, that tax could reach $45,000. Most economists and politicians these days still cling to the fantasy that government spending stimulates real economic growth. But government debts have exploded since the financial crisis of 2007 with little to show for it. In France, debt equals 112% of GDP, up from 67% in 2007. The UK, it's 104% versus 43% in 2007. In the US, federal debt is higher than the previous record set in World War II. All this incompetence and destructive policy making comes as the world is becoming a more dangerous place. Growth is essential here and in the free world to create the resources for higher living standards, modernizing the military, and paying the ballooning interest on national debts. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.